Hey guys, um, as I know that you have your exam on 13th of December, uh, I thought like making a quick introduction of deep learning so that you can uh, recap the things very easily because this is the t like you don't have an organizer, right? And I have been thinking, how can I help? Unfortunately, I do not have a lot of ideas. So apart from the course materials that I have given, so I thought maybe I should just give you a quick uh, recap here, what you have, whatever you have done in the class and yeah, the basics of it so that you understand what is deep learning is all about yeah um yeah so i mean let me start with this like learning is of two types uh one is that step by step learning and another one is intuitive learning so step by step learning is more about like what you do in programming right like we kind of give an algorithm and based on this algorithm we kind of yeah we kind of write a program right and everything is done based on that but then there are other kinds of learning which are being learned based on intuition or based on experiences that we have in our life um yeah so for that we have different that's a different way of learning yeah and that's where machine learning basically fits in so the idea is that human learns from experiences and human can um like in instruct machine so can you design a machine that can learn from experiences designed by human and we do it in a way that we do not have to program it. it it would just learn from experiences as we do so that's that's in a nutshell what is uh, machine learning is all about and you have the exam today so uh, deep learning actually goes a bit deeper <laughs> as the name suggests, right so there um, we see uh, sorry for the echo, by the way, I don't have a lot of stuff in my room, so that's why I'm making echo. Um, yeah, deep learning actually goes, uh, like, it, it's, uh, it's try to simulate how human learns, right? Um, so, for example, when we're seeing the things, uh, like, let's say when we see things, it can come to, first come to a retina, right? And then uh, through, through different layers or different neurons, it eventually... Uh, reach to the final decision okay maybe this is a cat this is a house this is a dog I don't know what right so it's essentially there are multiple layers of neurons and through that like when the informations are passing by each neuron um, at the end it makes some decision uh, so computer scientists thoughts um, can we can we replicate that like and design machines that work that way and it was, I think it was done in 1970s. Uh, I, I don't remember the name actually who first came up with. And then in 1980s, uh, Joseph Hinton was the guy who actually kind of brought it back because like when it started, it was it got a lot of criticism that it would not work. So it stopped, but then in Joseph Hinton started again. So he's, he's called the godfather of uh, yeah deep learning basically. Uh, so what's happening is that uh, he started observing each single neuron yeah um, he took uh, like what happened in a neuron there are kind of receptors through that through which like um, yeah we are receiving information or that uh, not free but the neuron is receiving information and then there, there's this body and then it transmit right um, so one neuron can be connected with let's say tens of thousands of neuron um, yeah and based on the kind of message a neuron received it would be transmitted to particular neurons it would not go with all the connections it has right uh, that's kind of the basic principle and then if you look at it like the new structure of neuron like or the lot of neurons so it's one layer second layer third layer and there are so many layers right and then there are like some certain kind of connections and they are not of course random they are based on our experiences in our life or whatever whatever we have gone through um, yeah so that is kind of the basic building block based on which uh, deep learning is been or neural network has been formed like as the name suggests that we are trying to mimic uh, the neurons or the a network of neurons in human or like any living organism especially the humans and then try to mimic it right um, so like in human we have a neuron as a basic building block for this neural network uh, in, in computer or uh, in the computer world we have perceptron right it's exactly the same as a neuron 
And I think it's not as complicated as, as a neuron is, right? So, but the idea is that we are trying to mimic it. Um, so yes, we form uh, like layers of perceptron and whenever we receive an information, it goes through different layers and based on the layers, it kind of, uh, it's, it's kind of, uh, the feature extraction is happening in each layer, right? And then as an output, we get the desired result or like the idea is that to reach as close to the, as close to as desired result. Like to give an example, if you are seeing a dog, uh, if, if you are trained, uh, trained in a network to like identify dogs, uh, then whenever we give a new picture of dog which it has not already seen, it could be able to determine that okay it's a dog, right? So that's the basic idea. So how, how does it happen? Uh, how does this uh, network works actually? Um, it's to start with, right? Like when we're starting, there is nothing. So uh, there are kind of basically random connection uh, in an artificial neural network. Yeah, so that's the interesting thing between an artificial net, uh, neural network and uh, a like human neural network. So for example, at the birth, our connections, uh, like our neural network is not really random. Like the way the uh, neurons are connected, it's not completely random. There, there are certain pattern to it and it's based on uh, what you have learned, right? Or like what you, uh, I mean, so it's based on the genes basically, like because our forefathers has learned something and based on that, there are certain patterns. And of course, then um, we have less neuron when we born and then we, as we grow, as the brain grows, we, we get more and more neurons and the st brain structure becomes more and more complicated. But it, again, to start, like what I'm trying to point, point out here, um, the uh, neuron structure is not very random uh, in case of human. And that's the basic difference basically uh, between a human neural network and an artificial neural network. Because in artificial neural network, when you're starting, there is no pattern to it basically the connections are random so what happens like let's say we receive an information and then it comes to the first layer and then it goes to the second layer right and uh, so th there are random connections here yeah? um, and then what happens is that <laughs> based on those connections and based on the signal that we're sending and then there are two things uh, one is called activation function right activation function is basically whenever we get a signal uh, on this particular perceptron, we compute uh, like based on the signal, we compute a mathematical value, and if it is higher than certain th threshold, then we send the signal to the next layer. If it is not, then we don't send the signal, right? That's how it works. So that's what is an activation function is basically. So you should uh, read about activation function in in greater detail because they would ask questions from there for sure, um, <laughs> or most likely it would come from there. Uh, yeah, so uh, so activation function makes sure which of the neurons would be basically activated in that particular layer and it at one point it reaches to the end, right? And then it gives you some value or some output. Uh, so we have, we know that like what, what we are feeding, we know and we see the output. If it is very far, then we give feedback, right? And that um, that is called back propagation, right? That, uh, whenever we see the output and based on that we give feedback and then we readjust the connections yeah and trying the idea is that we are trying to get as much closer as uh, the input should be, like the input should be uh, equal to the output or the, uh, the your network should be able to uh, recognize uh, the input properly yeah so when we do this back propagation there is another thing called loss function loss function is what loss function is how much accuracy we are losing because of the current network the way it is uh, so that's that's again a mathematical function uh, that is another question that it might come so please read carefully and i have given some links uh, you should look at it um yes so and back propagation again could be of many times based on the kind of, kind of network that we are working on um yeah so one famous technique that we learned in the class in greater detail and I think you should also keep that in mind, the gradient descent, right? Uh, so what is gradient descent is uh, basically uh, trying to figuring out like 
to minimize the loss function uh, to get a better output or like getting the output as close to the input um, so gradient descent is kind of like a slopey hill where you move your function and the idea is to kind of making the minimize it, it, like minimize the error as much as you can for gradient descent i have also given a video lecture which is quite nice uh, i think you would be like it is understandable especially if you have attended my classes yeah um yeah so so far like again like the idea of this thing or what i'm trying to do is that give you a very basic idea of uh, yeah uh, neural network and deep learning and the, the why it's called deep learning it's basically we have like 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 the neuron we have many layers of perception right and because there are many layers that's why it's called um, deep deep learning a neural network the name itself suggests right why it's neural network um, so yes there was something that came to my mind but i i, I forgot yeah so uh, like un again unlike human brain human brain or like human neural network can process multiple things right we can process image you can process sound you can uh, process i don't know like yeah <laughs> so many other things language for example and like what not uh, but um, one single neural network cannot do everything it it is specialized on something uh, like for example that's why there are different types of a neural network like convolutional convolution neural network where uh where it's kind of um datas are uh how do i say datas are um, yeah you essentially recognize image right so uh and the idea is that you you get an image and try to compress it as much as you can compress and then try to detect it um again like the the links that i have given for neural net uh, like convolution neural network or uh, rrn uh they are recurrent neural network uh they are quite nice so please have a look on them so again these are different algorithms for different purposes right and even uh for image processing based on the application that we are having we might have different algorithms um yeah i think that's pretty much of it uh, just to summarize uh we have um we have a uh, like a network of perceptron which are initially randomly connected then we feed data and uh, it uh, it gives certain output and the outputs are uh, initially not right and then we uh, it gives feedback and feedback based on this feedback the loss function is calculated like how much error is happening and based on that the network readjust itself uh, because we do not need to do anything to readjust them right like and that's the whole purpose of doing it um yeah so that's why we started getting more and more accurate result yeah uh, because there are a lot of layers uh, we do not actually know what a lot of the time what is happening um, in in deep learning so many times we would get the right result but we cannot really explain why why this is happening because this is uh, uh this is happening inside the yeah inside the network which we do not know at an abstract level oh yes um, and there is another thing um, so in neural network it's very important to abstract things for example uh, there we do not at least in the beginning of the network we do not give lot of attention to details right for example if you are wanted to um, recognize a dog so a dog could be big or small right like and so what we try to do we try to extract the features instead of focusing on every single detail we try to look okay like how, how the eyes of the eyes uh, that a dog has two eyes to like one nose and stuff like that right so extracting the features is uh, abstraction helps there like ext abstract uh, like extracting the features okay <laughs> i think that's it for today Hey like once again good luck to you guys um yeah if you have any question today tomorrow please uh please give me a message or like yeah you can you can ask my phone number from your cr and you can give me a call okay and then we can have a discussion <laughs> so please study well i wish you all the best and hopefully see you on on 13th love you guys take care bye bye